Lovely to see you. It's very nice here. to see you too. And uh, I looked through the whole programme and yours was the only abstract to include elements of humour, laughter and fun. <laughs> And um, we often neglect these things, or we don't talk about these things I think, as much as we should do. But to start off with, can, can you explain why you include those things in the work that you oh do? Oh, goodness, because I think they're key to learning. They're absolutely essential. Um, they're very, very important for motivating your learners. If they're having fun, and that isn't just having fun. It always has to have a, 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 an aim. You know, having fun is a serious business. It's, one way of putting it. Um, there is an aim, but it becomes memorable and it's something that, that they will take away with them, whatever it is. Uh, humor, if you can bring it in, but if it's not part of your personality, then it's not, not there. But if you can, and teaching pronunciation, there's always humor with that because it's funny. <laughs> and you want to make them laugh. And by letting them laugh at pronunciation, particularly, because if they can laugh with it, then they can enjoy it. So could you give us some um, practical examples of the things that you talked about in your workshop? Okay. Connected to that? Right, yeah. okay. Well, one of the activities I do is called Rubber Faces, which is actually linked in some ways to the old idea of the silent way of miming, miming phonetics and giving people an idea of doing, making it visual. And the idea behind that is that we do it so that if you cannot hear something, if you mime it and you exaggerate it and you use a lot of memory techniques as well so that you're also making it visual, you're involving movement, you're involving other things, um, then students can get a sound which otherwise they wouldn't. So this activity, Rubber Faces, I kind of get people... Um, moving their mouth in funny ways and they're mo moving their tongues and their lips and their all sorts of things like that first. So there's always a bit of a laugh with that. Then trying to get them to actually exaggerate. And we start with, um, I mime different fruit and they have to guess what the fruit is. But you have to keep it natural so that the pronunciation is natural as well. So you've got the stress in the right place. And the first one I do is and everybody has to do it with me. And then next thing you know, they're all saying banana, banana, um, because it's easy. But showing them how they have to exaggerate things in perhaps a slightly unnatural way by really sort of using their lips and things is a lot of fun. There's a lot of laughter in it. And then they do it in groups. And I give them either zoo animals or farm animals or something that they can do in a category. So yeah, that's you, just you, the first thing. Do you, do you ever take mirrors into the classroom? That they can see no, no, I don't do that because I don't. Uh, that I actually think would be demotivating because if they could actually see themselves, they people are very, very critical of the way they look in photographs. So if you bring in a mirror, you're going to really sort of put them off having a go at doing something because they don't want to. They don't want to look like that, but they like the idea that people laugh when they do something. So that you know that that is the the element you want to keep. You know, and then they have fun with it and they remember it and take it from there. When, when you ask teachers how much pronunciation they do, mm -hmm. pronunciation often comes quite low in the list of priorities That's right. of, a, of an EFL yeah. classroom. Why do you think that is, Dee Dee? Oh, there are lots of reasons for that. And it, it is something that is part of my workshop. For the non-native speaker teacher, it's lack of confidence. But it's not just lack of confidence. The fact is that they have gone through years when they were studying to be teachers, training as teachers, of having theory rammed down their throat. And it's just theory and no methodology, nothing that they can actually get their teeth into to be able to teach it. And so they avoid it, unless there's something in the course books or whatever that helps them, in which case they will. Um, the native speaker, on the other hand, is at the other end of the pole where they've had a bit on a training course where they've been. Um, it's scared them witless, and they don't understand it, and so they think, I'm not going to touch this with a barge pole. <laughs> I'm staying away from this as much as I possibly can. They can get the pronunciation just from listening to me. I don't need to do anything else, or else they might do some drilling if they happen to have been on a course where they were taught about drilling and they were taught about how to do it in a natural way. Mm. Mm. 
And how important do you think things like intonation are in intercultural communication, you know, in terms of politeness or being misunderstood? Um, I, th I think they are important. I think they are very important. Um, but the fact of the matter is that they're not touched upon by many, many teachers. They avoid it because they don't know how to teach it. It is very important if you take um, the situation of, let's say, Cantonese speakers of English, um, they sound incredibly aggressive and rude. And it's not that they're being aggressive and rude. It's simply to do with the fact that their intonation is giving completely the wrong impression of, of what they're trying to say. Um, and so it is important, but that's awareness raising, and that's why it needs to be brought into a classroom and needs to be an integral part of the teaching. And yeah. to come back to where we started with, with the miming, do, mm. do you see a relationship uh, between um, pronunciation and, and developing listening skills? Oh, everything, yes. I mean, my workshop actually, uh, in the 45 minutes, tried to include all four skills and to show how pronunciation is not just speaking and listening, or speaking, many people think, I start right away by making sure that they know it is about listening, but also reading, writing, and the, and the link between all of those, yeah, and how crucial it is, yeah. Great. Thanks mm. very much, Dee Dee. You're very welcome.